In this video, we are going to look at the maximal domain of functions. The maximal domain, or the implied domain, is the set of values of the variable for which the function exists. Let's look at the first example. We have to determine the maximal domain and the range of the function f of x equals square root of x. Well, you already know that we cannot have square root of a negative value in the real numbers set. For this reason, the quantity under the square root has to be greater than or equal to zero, which means that the, do the maximal domain of this function is going to be from zero to infinity. Um, either not notation is correct, either x greater than or equal to zero, or uh, the domain from zero to infinity. Just um, make sure that you have a square bracket on this at this end because of the greater than or equal to um, sign. Um, there is another notation as well. X is an element of zero uh, to infinity. If we look at the graph of this function, you can actually see that the domain is from uh, zero to infinity and uh, the range is from zero to infinity as well. To determine this value, all you have to do is just uh, substitute the value of x back into the function and then this uh, calculates the value of the function where it starts. So the range is from zero to infinity. Now we are going to look at a different example. It's still a square root function, but this time we have square root of 2x minus 3. So we do exactly the same as we did before. We are going to write 2x minus 3 greater than or equal to 0, and we are going to solve this inequality for x. So let's move the negative 3 to the other side of the inequality. Just remember that you have to change the sign. So this becomes greater than or equal to 3. Uh, and if we divide both sides of the equation by 2, this 2 is going to cancel that 2. So we end up with um, x greater than or equal to 3 over 2. Uh, sometimes we can write it as a decimal number, but you have to be very careful here because if the fraction, if the decimal number is not... Uh, an exact value, then you can you cannot use it um, as um, the end of a domain. The graph of this function looks like this. So the starting point is 3 over 2. So we can say that the, the domain of this function is from 3 over 2 to infinity, where 3 over 2, that end has a square bracket because it does take that value. The range, again, is from 0 to infinity. The next example we are going to look at is still a square root function, but this time it has this value outside the square root, so it has a plus 2. So we do the same as uh, before to, to determine the maximal domain. We have negative x plus 7 greater than or equal to 0. We are going to move the 7 from the left-hand side of inequality to the right-hand side of the inequality. So we end up with negative x greater than or equal to negative 7. We have negative x here, so we want to change it into a positive. So we multiply the inequality by uh, negative 1, because that's not going to change the value of this is just going to change the sign because two negatives make a positive. So we are going to have x. And on the other side, we are going to have 7 because negative 7 times negative 1 is positive 7. Just recall, when you multiply an inequality by a negative number, the sign changes to the other way. So we don't have greater than or equal to anymore. We have less than or equal to. How does this change the domain? The domain is going to be from negative infinity this time to 7. The graph looks like this, and it's quite clear that the, the values of x are, are less than 7. And the range of this function is going to be, well, first of all, let's calculate this value when x equals 7. So if we do f of 7... 
we are going to end up with negative 7 plus 7 under the square root and then plus 2 outside. Negative 7 plus 7 equals 0, so we have 0 plus 2, which is going to be 2. And it's quite obvious that this point here has coordinates 7 and 2. So the range of the function is going to be from 2 to infinity. The next example that I want to look at is a logarithmic function. For logarithmic functions, we do a similar way to determine the maximal domain. We do the quantity inside the logarithm has to be greater than zero. So notice that this value cannot be zero. Actually, the logarithm is undefined when this value inside equals zero. So uh, if we solve this inequality for x, we have x greater than 2, which gives us the domain of the function from 2 to infinity, where 2 is an open bracket, a round bracket. So let's look at the graph. We are going to, I'm going to talk about logarithmic functions in, a, in another video. So we'll um, talk about the vertical asymptote, which is exactly where x equals uh, 2, so where uh, this quantity becomes 0, so that's a vertical asymptote that the graph approaches but um, never reaches. The range of the function, as you can see, this one keeps going forever down and forever up, so the range of the function is the real number set.